This meeting is being recorded. Manvi, we can start now. Um, a very good evening to everyone joining in today. Um, I'm Prerna Shah, and I'm a senior research associate at iForest. Um, I'd like to thank all of our participants for joining in today um, to discuss the interlinked issues of forest fires, climate change, and the Um We shall begin with uh, opening remarks by Mr. Chandra Bhushan, who is the CEO and president of iForest. Um, this shall be followed by a short presentation by my colleagues, Manvi Singh, uh, who's the program lead um, um, uh, for energy and climate change, and um, Praveen Kumar, who's a consultant for us. Um, the presentation shall disseminate findings uh, from our ongoing research on the interlinkages between um, Tendupata practices and forest fires, and its impact um, uh, in terms of burnt area and emissions. Um, this shall be uh, followed by a panel discussion. Um, and uh, our panelists for this evening are uh, P.S. Roy, who's a former director uh, at the Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, who's also been advising us on this uh, project, and we are very grateful for him for this. Um, we have Anish Andheria, who is uh, the president at the Wildlife Conservation Trust. We have uh, Dilip Bode, who's executive director at the Vidharva Nature Conservation Society. Um, and we have Piyush Dogre, uh, who's a senior environmental specialist at the World Bank. Um, we also have uh, Sanjay Upadhyay, who is uh, a Supreme Court advocate. Um, so our moderator for this session is uh, Mr. Chandrabhushan, and uh, closing remarks shall be given by Pranayla, who's a senior technical advisor um, at the International Union um, Against Lung Disease and uh, Tuberculosis. Um, thank you all for joining uh, in today. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite Mr. Chandra Bhushan for his opening remarks. So. Thank you. Thank you, Prerna. And uh, I'm really happy to see this uh, extremely, extremely uh, interesting group of people who have joined today as panelists. So first of all, thanks to all the panelists. I would like to thank my colleague Mandvi, uh, our colleague Praveen, and you, Prerna, for organizing this uh, for, first of all, for doing this very interesting study, uh, as well as for organizing this webinar. Now, folks, uh, everyone talks about forest fire. Forest fire, uh, you know, the talk of the buzz around forest fire starts from February onwards. And you are likely to see uh, newspaper articles on forest fires I mean, starting from Uttarakhand. And before monsoon, you will start reading news article about forest fire in Chhattisgarh, Orissa, and Jharkhand. So forest fire has been in news for quite some time. And there's reason for this. Uh, now there is enough data to show that uh, forest fire is increasing uh, in many parts of the world. Interestingly, in some part of the world, it is actually reducing. Uh, in, in India, for example, forest fire is increasing. If you look at the data for last two decades, uh, there has been significant increase in the incidence of forest fire. Uh, 20, for example, if you take 2016-17 data, uh, there were about 40,000 forest fire incidents. Uh, by last year, I think it was close to 52, 53,000. So we are seeing increasingly uh, forest fire numbers are increasing. Uh, our analysis shows that even the burnt area, the amount of forest land uh, that is getting burnt in forest fire is also increasing. Now, there are many factors why forest fire is increasing. Obviously, as, as someone who works on climate change, uh, I do see a, a clear attribution of global warming in forest fire. Uh, I'm not the only person talking about it. Uh, any uh, scientist who is looking at the interplay of surface temperature, high wind speed, and low moisture 
uh, will tell you these are the perfect conditions for forest fire. And this is what global warming is doing. Your surface temperature and air temperature is increasing. You have moisture deficit in large areas uh, before uh, monsoon. And then you have high wind. Now you put all these three things together, you have perfect condition for forest fire. And this perfect condition exists in India from Himalayas to central, eastern India, part of southern India. In fact, uh, the, the, the forest fire areas or the susceptible areas uh, are, are increasing, uh, have, have increased over a period of time. Now, this is one part of the story. But there's another part of the story which is known to people. And that part of the story is that a large majority of forest fire is caused by humans, either intentionally or accidentally. So climate change is creating condition for forest fire, but that match is being lit by humans, either because uh, of some economic practices or accidentally. Now, this study is looking at, is looking at, at, at one economic practice, which is Tendupatta collection, and is there a linkage between the practice of Tendupatta collection and forest fire in three states of India? And we are looking at Maharashtra. Uh, we have looked at Maharashtra, we have looked at Odisha, and we have looked at Chhattisgarh. Uh, these three states produce about one third of uh, Tendu in the country. Uh, and, and, uh, and the forest fire incidents are also increasing in these three states. Of course, it is also uh, increasing in other states, but we chose these three states uh, as, as for our pilot study. So we have uh, the study essentially uh, with the help of many people. And of course, uh, you know, Prerna was, uh, Prerna introduced you to Dr. P.S. Roy, uh, Praveen, Mandvi, uh, everyone uh, came together and helped us to do this study to see what is the contribution of uh, Tendu collection practices to, to forest fire. We also estimated burnt area, but more than that, we tried to estimate the carbon emission. Uh, is there a, uh, what is the contribution of carbon emission from Tendu areas forest fire in these three states? So it's going to be very interesting. Uh, the findings are quite, uh, when I, I saw this, I was very uh, you know, uh, excited with uh, what we found. So without any delay, uh, I would like you also to get excited about this study. And I'll request my colleague Mandvi uh, to start the presentation and tell us how she has done it, what she has found, and what is the way ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, CD, uh, and uh, very good evening to, to all the participants. Uh, my screen is visible. Yes, it is visible. Yeah. You can do full screen, Marvi. Yes, I do. Uh, so, uh, Praveen and I will be making this uh, very short presentation on, on our analysis around forest fires and, and the Tendu Patta collection activity. Uh, Praveen is a, is a postdoc student at, uh, at the IIT uh, Kharagpur, and, uh, and he has been supporting us with this project uh, in, the, in the capacity of a consultant. Uh, the background uh, to this study uh, is, in fact, something that CB has kind of elaborated. Uh, but yeah, broadly, the rising incidences of forest fires uh, in India and its direct and significant impact on climate change. And then we get into exploring, you know, where the Indupatta activity kind of fits into all this. Uh, I'll not spend too much time on this, uh, uh, but just to sort of iterate. Uh, the need for climate action at this point, it cannot be overstressed. And, and two recent IPCC reports have kind of uh, made it very, very clear that uh, at this point, it's, it's, it's a now or never kind of uh, uh, situation as far as climate action is concerned. And um, in this context, forests and forest soil uh, kind of becomes very, very relevant. And uh, as far as the Indian government is concerned, there is a lot of stress on, on uh, afforestation. And there is a target of creating you know, additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons in the next uh, decade. Uh, but there is a big gap when it comes to taking action against degradation. And, and, uh, and that's where fi forest fires and the rising incidences of forest fires become, become a very important policy concern. 
Now uh, we know that thirty five percent of the of the uh, you know forest areas, uh, forest cover in India is assessed to be prone to forest fires and to various degrees. And uh, recent studies have also indicated in the past uh, two decades the forest fire incidences have gone up by ten tenfold. So this is a serious concern, and there are there are ecosystems where where uh, fires can play an important role in in regeneration, etc. But mostly in Indian context, studies have found that uh, that uh, forest fires are principal cause of of uh, degradation, especially in dry deciduous uh, forested regions of Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, and Chhattisgarh. So this this issue of uh, uh, forest fires goes, you know, it has obviously has multiple dimensions of climate change as well as 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 um, ecology and, and biodiversity impact. Uh, like Siri said, it is largely understood that 90 to 95 percent of these forest fires are 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 human made, uh, and and available evidence kind of uh, based on media reports and also acknowledged by ground level studies and by uh, government reports, it uh, it indicates very clearly that you know there is there is an uh, there is an acknowledgement that these fires are being uh, kindled for supporting or facilitating the growth of NTFPs um, uh, in, 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 in forests. And particularly the name of uh, Mahua and Tendu comes up quite frequently in these reports. Um, so far, what we found was that there is very limited kind of systemic inquiry into this, this understanding these causes behind forest fires. And so our research, uh, we decided to focus on, on Tendu because it is a very, very prominent NTFP uh, in India. And there is a tradition of using uh, fires for, for supporting its collection. And uh, just on Tendu a little bit, uh, Tendu is, is, is a tree which is mostly found in India's uh, dry deciduous forests. And the leaves of this tree are used for making BDs, which is the, the, the commonly smoked uh, cigarette, hand-rolled, uh, handmade cigarette of uh, the, you know, very commonly smoked in India. We're talking about uh, an estimated uh, 300,000 metric tons of Tindu leaves being collected every year uh, in India, which is being used to produce over 4,000 billion sticks of of uh, of Tindu, of Bidi. And uh, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh are major producers. They account for almost 60% of the total production. And then uh, four states of uh, Jharkhand, Rajasthan, Odisha, and Maharashtra account for another 30%. So uh, now this 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 practice of uh, you know uh, Tendu collectors and 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 contractors using fires to cut back the young exposed shoots of Tendu plant to stimulate its growth uh, for you know better fresh green leaves for good quality beading making. Uh, this has this has been going on for a, for a while, uh, and like I said, it's often reported, uh, but uh, but it's it's not uh, documented in a very uh, you know uh, procedural manner. And we understand that these fires are essentially set from January onwards, but mostly these are found to be concentrated during the dry seasons of April and May. And uh, while mostly these are intended to be small and sort of located just in the region where Tindu Patra has grown, but it tends to often go beyond its boundaries because these are dry season and the, the moisture content in the fire is low. And also then there is the issue of negligence, etc. Now, um, like Siri said, these, these, these uh, news of uncontrolled fires in these states of Maharashtra and Chhattisgarh and uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh, it's often captured during these months and are often uh, sort of linked to Tendu harvesting itself. What has happened at policy level is that the state governments have discouraged it. Uh, you know, we we have uh, we have the central and state laws that have that have set penalties uh, against uh, against setting uh, forests on fire, and then there are explicit measures also included for for. Uh, for controlling this practice. For instance, uh, the Odisha government every year sets aside a fund for bush cutting uh, instead of burning uh, to, to, for, 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 for essentially as to discourage use of fires. And in fact, last year in the crop season of 2021, uh, it had dispersed around 35 uh, uh, crores towards bush cutting. Uh, similar support is also available in Madhya Pradesh for, for bush cutting. 
but we'll see what the data says in terms of what is the practice despite of these, these funds. Uh, in Maharashtra, very strong measures have been taken. In fact, uh, the government has banned the use of uh, forest fires for Tendu back in 2012. And uh, the contractors and, and Gram Sabhas have been made responsible for, for controlling these fires. Uh, in fact, if a fire breaks in a Tendu unit in Maharashtra uh, before the auction date, uh, then the unit is to be withdrawn from auctioning it uh, altogether. And if it breaks after the auction, uh, then the contract itself is cancelled. Uh, now, the data isn't clear on how many cancellations have actually taken place, though we do re uh, sort of read in news items that, you know, warnings are being issued by forest departments uh, time and again. Now, um, why did we specifically explore uh, Tendu Patta and maybe not uh, another NTFP like Mahua? Uh, we decided to focus on, on Tendu Patta for, for two, three key reasons. Uh, firstly, like I said, it's a very prominent NTFP, uh, which has been kind of, uh, which has prospered under government patronage. Uh, until recent deregulation in certain areas uh, in Maharashtra and Odisha, Tendupata has largely been a nationalized produce, uh, which means that state government laws and, and rules have, have are in place that, are, that have helped create a, a steady market linkage uh, for the Hindupatta production, and which is not available for uh, for uh, any other NTFP, perhaps uh, as strong. So today it is not only an important output. In fact, for certain for certain uh, uh, state-owned agencies, such as in Maharashtra, uh, uh, such as in particularly Madhya Pradesh and Odisha, uh, it is it is one of the you know largest sources of revenue for the for the state agencies. So 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 so. Uh, uh, produce, which is kind of uh, supposedly so polluting, we'll look at what the data says. But if fires are being used to produce an output, uh, which is uh, you know then being supported by the government machinery, so there is a linkage which needs to be explored and understood. And it kind of becomes important to look at why Tindu and why not some something else, which is perhaps then more promising as a maybe medicinal or a, a commercial NTFP. Uh, the second reason is that this this, this, these leaves are ultimately being used to produce, uh, uh, you know, a tobacco product at the end of the day. And uh, we have multiple studies to looking at what kind of impact BD consumption has, uh, direct and indirect costs on human health and even contributing to mortality. Uh, there was a, a study back in 2018 that said that, you know, nearly 80, uh, nearly 800 billion uh, uh, was the cost of uh, illnesses and early deaths which were resulting from BD consumption in India. And we're talking about 400 billion sticks consumed annually uh, versus 100 billion cigarettes consumed annually. Uh, so that's that's a huge market that, that we, and consumption that we're talking about. Uh, lastly, of course, the presence of Tendu uh, now itself is an indicator of uh, degraded forests. Uh, because Tendu trees were initially, you know, the understory of uh, sal and tree. Uh, but now in the image also that you saw, they've largely been reduced to shrubs and the diversity of the forests has completely been uh, destroyed. So, so then from that perspective also, uh, exploring this linkage kind of becomes uh, very important. Uh, the approach that we've taken for this study is, uh, is it is already explained a little bit. But basically, we are looking to establish a, a clear linkage between the Hindu leaf collection and forest fires because often it's not openly acknowledged in, in uh, that this is happening. So we wanted to explore what the data is saying and also assess the impact, it, particularly in terms of the burnt area, and also some indication on what the CO2 emissions, what is the scale of CO2 emissions that we're talking about. We are focusing on um, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra, and Odisha which uh, again, CV has mentioned, it's 36% it's of the forest fire incidences that took place in the last fire season and 35% of the Tendu leaf collection that, that typically happens. Um, we are using available uh, satellite data on forest fires, vegetation type emissions, and then uh, the, the methodologies or the approaches we've used, the, the tools we've used are basically related to mapping uh, a statistical tools, some modeling tools, and some back of the envelope also towards the end. So um, 
at this point i think i'll request uh, praveen to to take over and talk about the 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 data and the what the uh, the results are saying uh, good evening everyone so now i'm going to talk about like how we did the analysis and to understand how the pata collection is associated with the forest fires so for that as i might have already like mentioned we collected data like for the like the fire points and where they are located in this region and what kind of vegetation they have the data was collected basically from the satellite sources uh, some organization such as isros uh, and also from from lab analysis so uh, we did the with this data as you can see uh, on the left hand side is a distribution of kandu sample points it uh, represents like uh, the locations of the stars and do uh, like species in this particular three states overall we found out around 615 sample points uh, in which uh, it occurs was mostly in odisha followed by maharashtra and then by chhattisgarh on uh, the right hand side you can see is a distribution of our uh, tendu linked forest fire points uh, in total we get around 1500 points forest fire points uh, which is like uh, associated with this uh, distribution of this tendu sample points so in from the, the time period of 2011 to 21 we got around 788 uh, forest fire points in odisha 5 around 550 points in maharashtra and 200 points in chhattisgarh so uh, basically uh, this tells us like you know how this forest it gives an first impression of you know how forest fire is associated with the presence of tendu in this region uh, next one yeah so here uh, we also try to understand like okay so this fire points where they are happening like what kind of vegetations you know they are associated with and we found out that uh, basically with the vegetation type it was mostly a uh, dry deciduous kind of uh, vegetation uh, if you go to state wise in maharashtra it was dry deciduous as well as peak mixed dry deciduous vegetation type in which uh, these uh, tendu linked forest fires were happening in chhattisgarh it was mostly moist deciduous and sal forest uh, in which our uh, tendulated forest fires were happening again and in odisha it was sal mixed moist deciduous and sal mixed dry deciduous forest type uh, which was again like responsible for this uh, forest tendulated forest fire and if you look uh, look into the left hand side it's uh, like it is a trend of uh, like trajectories of our uh, tendulating forest fires and here you can see uh, in 2020 uh, during the like pandemic time the the number of this forest fire point dropped in all the three states and then afterwards the like as the you know, economy started and this you know we started to bounce back in 2021 the, the number of these fire points it increased like like drastically in all the three states so i mean uh, it tells us that you know this, when, during the pandemic time it suppressed but again as it all the things started to change and things started to move on this number has increased thanks ma'am so uh, so in all so we try to also understand like how this uh, like this uh, tendu like uh, presence of tendu and forest fire are, are they related or not in the three state or overall and we, during our analysis we found out that they are highly related with a uh, like a correlation coefficient of over 0.8 and it indicates a very high correlated uh, like correlation between the forest fires and the presence of tendu in the entire region and if you go into the like state wise again all the three states show the very high correlation between forest fire and tendu presence and out of the three states odisha state shows a consistent high correlation during the uh, period of 2011 to 2020 uh, 2021 next time yeah so uh, to understand uh, like we we wanted to calculate you know how much area the this like tendu is like a uh, is like a uh, burning because of this forest fires so we calculated burnt area index then we also tried to model uh, we modeled the distribution of tendu in this study region using uh, like like uh, like uh, max and uh, like entropy model and then we are like in the end we tried to like we identified the uh, the potential uh, like species distribution of tendu related to the uh, their like occurrence of forest fires and we then calculated their areas burnt area associated with them so regarding the burnt area index uh, we found out around 27000 uh, square kilometer of area in, in this in the three states 
which is roughly equivalent to the area of combined area of Tripura and Goa, is burnt down in this region, which was uh, responsible from like uh, all the forest fires. And uh, if we come to the distribution model, uh, we found out that uh, around 53,000 square kilometer of uh, area in the three states, you know, they are highly uh, put like the highly good site for the Tendu's presence, which we modeled through our uh, Maxen model. In when we, you know, once we get this uh, like two different maps, one is for the burnt area and one with the like, potential distribution of Tendu, we overlaid them together and we found out that uh, the burnt area, which was uh, like uh, like uh, responsible for the Tendu related forest fires, and we got around thirteen thousand nine hundred five square kilometers of area, in in, in which Chhattisgarh is the high like represented the highest number of uh, like largest number of burnt area in uh, in these three states, and followed by Maharashtra and then Odisha. Next one, yeah. So uh, here. We can see overall the three states, Chhattisgarh state has the highest candle uh, link burnt area index for the study period. And out of that, if you know, if you look into the Chhattisgarh state in 2017, you know, it, it has the highest number of burnt area in the like burnt area, roughly around uh, the, equivalent, uh, the, area, the equivalent size of Delhi, you know, uh, the area of Delhi and roughly the size area equivalent to Delhi, uh, Delhi it burnt down in 2017. In Maharashtra, basically in 2012, uh, an area of 855 square kilometer, roughly equivalent to the urban Pune city, it burned down. And in Odisha, uh, particularly in 2021, because uh, the Tendu like burnt area, it Tendu increased a lot. And over there, uh, like around three times the size of the city uh, area got burned due to this Tendu related forest fires. So, and uh, overall, we also found out that particularly the month of March, April, and May were the major months in which this candle uh, related fire, they were uh, happening and occurring. Yeah. So uh, like once we get this area, we try to also assess uh, like what is the like greenhouse gas emission or like CO2 emissions from these forest fires. We found out that around 14.2 million ton of CO2 you know, was like emitted from these three states in the 2021 period. And uh, it was, it, it is roughly equivalent to 5.6 million cars in a year, emission from a car in a year. So in, in the three states, Chhattisgarh state has the highest uh, like value of CO2 emissions, which are linked to Tendu related forest fires, followed by Maharashtra and then Odisha. So uh, in again here, we see in, if you look into the month wise, it was mostly uh, like March, April, and May month, which was responsible for the CO2 emissions related to the forest fires. Next. Uh, thank you, Praveen, for, for taking us through the analysis. Uh, so, so broadly, that's the data that we've uh, an analyzed uh, and processed. It's indicating a wide use of uh, fires for stimulating Tendu growth. Uh, this is simple kind of back of the envelope extrapolation, but we are talking about uh, you know based on the three state the data, from, data from three states, an estimate uh, estimated sixty thousand square kilometers of forest area being burned on account of Tendu collection in the past uh, uh, decade, uh, which is nearly equivalent to the size of Himachal Pradesh for reference. And uh, even in a single year, the highest burns were in 2012 and 2021. We're talking about 10,000 square kilometers of area being burned, uh, again, equivalent to the size of uh, the state of Tripura. And even during the COVID year, when the, when the fires were low, uh, we're talking about nearly half the size of Delhi being, being, being burned down for the Indupatta collection. So, so we're talking about massive environmental damages. And these are, these are uh, not just like local area problems. These are, you know, it's a planetary health issue at this point. And uh, what we find is that central government and state government laws and policies in place have, have not uh, translated into an, an impact on the ground in terms of controlling these fires. Uh, so definitely there's a need to strengthen the regulatory control. But I think even more important at this point is, is uh, for the policymakers to think about uh, alternative 
sustainable livelihoods for Tendupata collectors to to as a measure to effectively uh, you know control this 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 contribution towards uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, the point is that um, Tendu is 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 a uh, is 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 a massive employment provider for a large section of forest dependent populations. Even though it's a short term employment, uh, given the skill sets and the and the income levels of people who are taking this activity, uh, it is amounting to a to a substantial contribution to their to their livelihood. So uh, we're talking about just uh, perhaps seven million collectors in in in. Uh, MP Chhattisgarh and Odisha combined, and beyond collection, then there are you know multiple people uh, involved in processing activities and other uh, associated activities that are getting livelihood from this activity. So any any uh, sort of uh, any action against the Hindu Patta forest fires would have to account for the livelihood of these uh, these uh, these forest dependent populations, and uh, it's not that these states do not have uh, alternative. NTFPs that can be promoted and supported through similar kind of mechanisms that Tindu was supported uh, to reach that scale and perhaps even investments in in value added uh, value by adding value to these uh, NTFPs for better outcomes for the dependent communities. Uh, our assessment is that given the the massive amount of carbon abatement we're talking about from giving up Tindu, uh, carbon markets could be tapped into as a good source of uh, investment uh, investment money. Uh, which is required for for uh, developing uh, developing these alternatives. Um, I'll stop with that. I'll, I'll let you finish something on the way forward. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mandvi. Uh, for this and, and Praveen for this very interesting presentation. Uh, as I said, and, and I think you 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 emphasize that point very well. That while on one hand uh, it is now very well established that we are looking at at large forest area uh, being burnt because of uh, you know this practice of tendu collection. But on the other hand, we are talking about tens of millions of livelihood, which is attached to Tendu. And we have to find an answer, and the answer will be in livelihood itself. I think, first of all, we have to accept that there is a problem. And once we have accepted that there is a problem, then we will find answer. And as I said, and that's what I think, Manvi, you said very well, alternative livelihood has to be uh, the focus uh, if you really want to reduce this forest fire. And I don't think that in today's world where there is such a uh, huge awareness on, on, on global warming, resources are being put to uh, reduce emissions. Mitigation is a big uh, you know, uh, area where investment is coming. Carbon market can also play an important role uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, reducing emissions uh, from this practice. Now, all these are very well. Uh, you know, it, it was. It is our part of the story. You know what we have found, the study that we have done. Uh, so thank you very much for presenting that. Now we want to hear from the panelists. And uh, as uh, I started by saying, we have an extremely interesting group of people because uh, we have a conservationist. Uh, we have someone, uh, you know, who has gone away from Tendu to uh, other uh, non-timber forest produce and seen the result, whether leaving Tendu is possible or not. We have a former director of Remote Sensing Institute who will tell us uh, about his perception of the methodology uh, for the study. And we have a World Bank expert who has looked at forest fire closely. And lastly, we have a Supreme Court, court advocate, and as well as actually an avid forester himself, Sanjay, who, uh, you know, who will tell us the legal aspect of how do we deal with these issues because states have uh, put in laws uh, uh, to you know uh, uh, reduce this practice of, of forest fire. So let me start with uh, uh, Mr. P. S. Roy, uh, who is a former director of Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, uh, for his opening remark. The rules of the game is as follows: uh, we will give you about five to seven minutes of opening remark, and then I will ask one question before I move to the next panelist. 
So I'll go through this uh, round of uh, uh, opening remarks from panelists and one question from my side. And then in the end, uh, we will open the discussion and we will take questions from the audience. I think this should be all right. So let me now uh, request uh, Mr. P.S. Roy for his opening remarks. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chandra Bhushan, for uh, giving me opportunity to uh, be here. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate the presentation made by Mandavi and Praveen. Uh, they have uh, made a case that there could be a spatial link between the distribution of Tendu Patta leaf and fire, forest fire, and in emissions of carbon uh, emissions in these areas. And now, uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, background material which has been presented by uh, here has been a part of a study which has been undertaken by Department of Space and Department of Biotechnology for mapping the uh, forest vegetation and understanding the biodiversity of, uh, potential of the Indian forest. Uh, as has been mentioned that 95% uh, of the uh, uh, fires are introduced uh, because of the man-made forest fires and uh, we what we have seen that some of the social practices like shifting cultivation uh, the nft uh, NT, uh, nf uh, non timber forest produced collection or also the uh, practices like grass livestock uh, grazing these are some of the social practices which been factors but one of the dominating factors has emerged as a climate change. Climate change uh, in last 30 years has shown the increase of 25 to 30% of uh, average forest fire incidences in Indian forest. The main reason is number of dry days, uh, enhanced dry days during the fire period that is sometime in January to uh, May, the desiccation process of Indian forest floor, and also the some of the uh, factors uh, leading to uh, upwards movement of uh, forest fire in Indian Himalayas. Now, uh, studies also have been have found that El Nino years matching with the uh, fire period also has a impact on the enhanced forest fires. Now, these uh, factors complicate the uh, things in the forest, especially which are facing already degradation because of the various reasons. Uh, some of the uh, consequences which are going, we are, uh, will be seeing in future is uh, the regeneration of the forest floor, the soil degradation, especially the loss of organic matter, besides having a emissions because of the forest fire. Now, this study uh, opens up a, a very important discussion, uh, especially uh, linking the social practices and uh, incidents of forest fires. Um, I have a uh, uh, some of the experiences I can tell you that uh, the forest fires uh, has been increasing in India. It's a many time on you know, average number of 25,000 fire uh, fire occurrences during fire season. Now it has uh, some of the uh, worst years have seen about 40 to 45,000 forest fire locations. Now this is a, a very serious concern on emissions and also in the condition of forest. I think I will stop here and uh, uh, and give an opportunity for uh, some of the questions to be answered. Uh, Dr. Roy, the first question you know uh, I have uh, for you is, uh, you have been with uh, you know Remote Sensing Institute for a long time. Is there, what could be the next step of research agenda on forest fire, uh, which, our space agencies can take up. I know that MODIS is 
you know, uh, we are able to uh, calculate number of forest fire. There's MODIS data and there are uh, some other data that is available. But what is the new research agenda considering climate change, social practices and increasing forest fire that our institution should be looking at? Okay. Uh, see, basically MODIS is a uh, course resolution satellite which provides you one kilometer and uh, in some spectral channels 650 500 meter ground resolution that is the it picks up a not actual forest fire but it picks up the heat islands heat warmer pixels in especially and obviously the uh, wherever the forest fire is there dominates you have a warmer pixels now major issue is that can we increase the spatial resolution spatial resolution means detail of the uh, ground signature which we are recording and also temporal resolution revisit capacity of the satellites which provides me a monitoring trend of uh, forest fire and it's a spreading trend of forest fire uh, there is a going to be a very interesting satellite in coming years where from ge geostationary platform, uh, such uh, observations can be made. That means it is, will be continuously looking at the same point with 50 meter ground resolution. And uh, ISRO has already planned such satellites. And these satellites, they will provide us in a hyperspectral uh, domain where about 160 channels will be there. Uh, in nutshell, there is a requirement of increased spatial resolution and temporal resolution. And uh, ISRO is already working towards it to provide such kind of a data. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, first of all, an announcement to all the attendees. Uh, this is a very cross-cutting issue. And therefore you have an opportunity to ask a lot of questions from the panelists. Please go in Q&A session, put your questions and I'll ensure that that is answered by our panelists. If not, they will respond back to you later. So, but please, it's a very extremely cross-cutting issue and you must, uh, you know, you should ask questions uh, uh, from our panelists. Now, let me go back to now Anish. Uh, Anish uh, is a, the president of Wildlife Conservation Trust uh, for his opening remark. Anish. Um, thank you, Chandra. Uh, a very good presentation, Mandvi and Praveen. And it's a pleasure to be part of this panel. So. Uh, I will, uh, you know, as an opening, uh, because a lot of work has been done, there is there are a lot of facts and figures that have been presented. And I just want to kind of go into a micro uh, level uh, view of biodiversity in general, because why are fires dangerous for Central India? Uh, so we must remember that Central India uh, is a very, very important uh, part of the country because several rivers that irrigate millions of uh, hectares of India are born in the central Indian landscape. So when you say central India, you are looking at uh, the Satpura range precisely, but you can also start looking at the Vindhyas because that also is part of it. And uh, Satpuras are an extremely important land formation are running across the width of the country and they provide uh, catchment for innumerable uh, rivers. So forests in central India have a huge bearing on the quantity and quality of water that the peninsular India uh, above the Western Ghats uh, provides. And so when you talk of forest degradation, you have a direct impact on uh, Precipitation, you also have direct impact on um, the biodiversity that goes down because you must understand that fires in India are, is not a recent phenomenon. Uh, Tendu is a very ancient uh, business. A lot of it, the governments are trying to regularize it. Not even 10 years ago, this was absolutely a gray market and a lot of people have become millionaires being in this business. Uh, so there were fires related to Tendu for many, many decades. So the central Indian landscape, especially those Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra region has been exposed to these fires for 
decades. What is changing, like Mr. Roy is saying, is that climate change is adding a very, very dangerous layer to this fire, that the fires are not only more intense, uh, but they are far more frequent. It is very difficult to control them. So in the past, it was possible for the forest department with their minimal facilities to try and fight those fires. I'm not saying they were very successful in it, but there was hope now. And that can be seen from the number of forest guards and watchers dying every year or in getting injured every year because of fire. So climate change is only making this um, issue of fire extremely, extremely dangerous for biodiversity in general. So what does happen when you have a constant cycle of fire? It reduces the productivity of the forest. It, that means the vegetation in the forests uh, gets impacted. Why? Because there are some fire loving plants and most plants don't like fire. Which are those fire loving plants? These are, some of them are native, but a large proportion of these are invasive species, alien invasives like lantana, like parthenium, like eupatorium, like uh, and there are several others. So when fire comes in, it destroys the uh, recruitment process in the forest, which is very important. It starts having an impact on the recruitment of native species and you have a profuse recruitment of uh, fire loving plants, which are not edible for most species. Uh, so it is reducing the productivity at two levels. One is by directly eliminating B by replacing native edible flora with non edible alien species. It also then has an impact on biodiversity and biodiversity and forests are extremely interlinked. People think of climate change and they think of forest degradation as the main reason. But the another important layer is that of biodiversity. So all those areas where the biodiversity has gone down have a lesser chance of fighting back when it comes to climate change. Because the overall biodiversity of say the central Indian landscape, when it goes down, there is no immigration, emigration possible of certain fire, uh, non-resistant species of animals. As a result, uh, pollinators, germinator uh, and dispersers vanish from a forest. Once that happens, even if you take the fire away for a few years, that forest will not regenerate into its original form. It will be in some form which is depleted in resources and it will look green from satellite. So when you look at uh, forest cover, you should also do the ground routing to see what species there is. And you will find that uh, obviously currently with MODIS, you are looking at temperature. So there is no ambiguity on that. But to see the quality of forest also, if you just look at your uh, uh, you know, vegetation, it will give you a wrong picture, picture. Everything that is green is not good. So that's one thing. Fire also has a huge impact on soil erosion because it removes a lot of important nutrients, especially fungi, fungi from the top surface of the soil, making the soil more progressively granular. And because of that, uh, every time that there is rain, even if it rains well, you will have that top soil going away. And we know that it takes thousand years for six inches of soil to form, even in a place like Western Ghats. And so the impact of fire is far out, uh, out numbering in terms of money for the government than what meets the eye because it, it, it is depleting the forest of the regenerative power. And remember, 60% of Indians plus 60% are farmers and 85% of those are subsistence farmers. And they today are dependent on surface water largely for taking at least one crop. The underwater, underground water that is being tapped is giving them an option of second crop, but the first crop itself doesn't do well and India will be in for a crisis. So when you look at this central Indian landscape, you must look at it from the impact it is going to have on biodiversity and the impact it's going to have on livelihoods, which will have a huge impact on the social and the unrest that you will see in this area. And many of these fire prone areas you will see if you map the red areas of India, which means the areas where there is insurgency, where there is some amount of nexalism, you will see that these typically are also the regions where there is a lot of unrest in people. People are not happy and so they are easily um, maneuvered into directions which are uh, not uh, legally accepted. So you must understand that social unrest, fire, biodiversity, climate change is all connected. That's all I wanted to say. I will 
take more questions later thanks adish uh, you know adish you actually picked up a point which is very important uh, you know uh, two years back when australia was going through massive fire the eucalyptus crown fire uh, and the images were coming from australia i uh, approached few forester to understand how prepared we are as a country to deal with crown fire because you know over a period of time uh, eucalyptus has been planted widely in this country initially as a roadside plant but then in farm forestry also as plantation in forest so and the answer at that point of uh, time i got was that we will do fire line uh, you know uh, we we will include local community i was not very satisfied with the answer i got from foresters about our ability to deal with large fire what is your sense are we prepared or, or is it that we need to do lot uh, in terms of preparing ourselves uh, from the next big fire fire that is that is happening but is going to increase in the future so first of all we must know that central india because there are ground fires every year many of our areas burn twice in a year there is you don't have excess combustible material really so therefore the fires remain ground fires but with climate change and as the moisture content in the trees as well as on the soil change and as the flora composition changes our fires are going to be progressively more uh canopy fires as well so the fires that were just burning the top uh, you know the inflammable material on the ground can now start engulfing larger areas also remember that when the fire size is also uh, extremely important when it comes to uh, you know this difference between the ground fire and the the canopy fire because once you have large areas burning the ambient temperature of that is so high that uh you and also if it's an undulating terrain so if it's a flat terrain it's easier to handle but if it's undulating terrain then fires can really progress once they are on the slope then uh, nothing can really stop them it will only self extinguish them when they have burnt everything that is there to burn so uh, to answer your question in one line uh, the forest department is not equipped currently financially also to be able to combat this the second an the answer an another uh, added answer is that even if they were equipped it is not possible to fight these fires the best way to fight these fires is to stop them from happening it is impossible when you see those very jazzy images of helicopters going carrying some large loads of fire everybody sitting here dilip uh, mr roy everybody will tell you that it is good as a news item it really doesn't help and it definitely won't help india and india is not capable of doing this so uh, i think uh, a ground fires are not no longer going to be ground fires b even with ground fires the department is not equipped so when it hits the canopy it is impossible to do anything um, and so i am really fearing that if we don't move away from the current practice and this also and i will answer maybe there are questions later that the financial interest of the government should also be dealing with things like tendu patta which are anyways injurious to health and most communities in india are inflicted by addictions to either bds or to alcohol and and if you talk to any woman in any of these villages then you will hear them say that we want our men to be taken away from these practices so there is a serious case of really rethinking the interests that and even if you regularize it you are basically allowing people to uh, deplete the forest to make a product which is going to create cancer to millions of people thank you thank you anish i, I think uh, you know uh, our colleague pranay uh, you know who has been a lot of support for this this study uh, will exactly say what you have said and he has been saying that for a long time that it is not only about environment it is also about health so the, this triangulation of environment health and social issues uh must be understood because we generally talk in isolation we only talk about environment or we only talk about health or we only talk about social issues so thank you very much for that now i will now uh, request dilip ji uh, for his opening remarks uh, and then i will uh, we will take it forward from there dilip ji thank you chandra ji uh, this is a well 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 known fact that how this forest fire impacting adversely on the entire ecosystem and greatly hampering even the livelihoods because in central indian ecosystem 
many poor people they are heavily depend on forest resources for their livelihoods because they are having very small land holding not many of them they are not having land holding more than half a acre of land or the one acre of land and for the rest of the period when this uh, kharif uh, come the, the, up to the kharif season they heavily depend on forest resources and particularly three kind of sources which are the major sources having commercial demand particularly bamboo tendu and mahua flowers and mahua seeds and this first comes in uh, tendu leaves the thing is that uh, as we are talking about uh, curative management and preventive management it's 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 a, it's a fault in the management we always go for the curative management what about the preventive management if the if, if the if this kind of fire forest fires they are visible their 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 impact is visible how it is addressing very adversely this climate change and and so also it is impacting on the erosion of the soil so erosion of the soil resulting into recharging of the groundwater storage is and also impacting on the yield of the entire area when we started working with uh, community based forest management uh, even earlier to this 2006 forest right act and prior to that joint forest management etc uh, we started as a as a as a wildlife then we came to know that it is it is impacting very adversely on the habitat of the of the animal we always talk about the higher fauna flora what about the higher, low, low, lower fauna um, number of insects number of plants they are getting vanished they are getting destroyed because of because of the forest at the entire regeneration process it is stopped and we are we are we are spending huge amount on 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 plantations but what about this regeneration system it is it is it is made failed it is it is it, is, it, is, it, is, it got failed and then when we started working with community management uh, or to be managed by community then there was a question from the community because why there is no no availability of the trees up tindu patta having fruiting because all generation all old generation people started asking this question where 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 those those trees are gone those are not producing fruits of tamru tamru foods to this because of the continued pruning of the uh, forest bushes and those are not going up into a good uh, grown tree forest and second thing this forest fire then we started thinking how to manage the uh, entire system because people were uh, interested about getting more yield and to get the more yield we have to manage forest in a very sustainable manner so sustainable management of the forest means people first complain about production forestry objective of the forest management which was which was actually um, uh, declared by the government of india in their forest policy in 1988 that now we have to move from production forestry to conservation management forestry conservation oriented forestry now after this 1990 today we are in 202222 what is the status of this uh, conservation oriented management of the forest system again we are going 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 to support that system which is giving more yield in in the form of commercial commercial um, profits whatever management is being done for support tendu patta is collected is being collected we are system is always protecting the interest of the bidi patta purchasers because bidi patta purchasers they, are, they they want to get more flesh they want to get more tender leaves so forest fires are there definitely forest fire fire and how how many how many kinds of convictions we have seen there is there is a condition in maharashtra tender document pruning is allowed why pruning is allowed allowed even even in the condition of today's uh, conservation ma- management system and conservation management principles are agreed by the government of india in their document presented before the parliament in the form of forest policy even then we are not leaving those restrictive practices and again and again we are making that a condition in the t- t- tender tender document that yes the trader or the bidder bidder for the tindu patta will be allowed go for the pruning every year pruning is allowed and result is that that tree that bush won't grow into a tree and can't produce any fruit and there are no fruit there are there will be no seeds at all seeds won't go to soil and there will be no germination so when we started tindu patta in 2013 that is the first kind case in, in entire country with 12 villages now we are grown up to 175 villages it's a collective management 
so ban was pruning up the pruning up the pindu patta people said that we don't want that kind of any production which is being catalyzed because of different kind of destructive practices let it be let forest grow with whatever requirements of the nat natural systems natural system production uh, should be there and then cut those practices which are destructing entire entire forest and also impacting very badly on the and the wildlife habitat because many areas in central india good forests are required for even providing good cover to wild animals as a good habitat and then we stop cutting bush second thing people themselves they came out this idea to control fire in their area where forest in, in case of their forest people go and control the fire and particularly in many areas where we have been working in uh, villages they do not go for any kind of forest and then for to address commercial requirement of the the thing is that that regeneration is uh, we have seen good kind of good kind of luxurious regeneration of the forest around 600 to 1200 species per hectare appeared as a species in in, in because of those two practices my question is that for a department knows all those things how many kind because there are the system from central uh, controlling uh, agency to respect to uh, uh, divisions of the forest to give them forest fire alerts every year we are getting those incidences and record it uh, in the in the form of number number of incidences what what about what about this ma preventive management and then only can government can control fires just because of the uh, making financial provision or getting some new technology equipments to control the fire it won't it can't happen as said by anish i agree totally that fire should be controlled at the level of the initiation of the fire fires and that to at the at the ground level and many people many uh, villages they are in central indian ecosystem they are heavily depending on forest system and people honor this conservation practices of the forest provided there should be a good dialogue in between government and and, and the people together if there is no good dialogue there should be a, a real uh, kind of manage, participatory management and this participatory management of uh, uh, forest uh, would definitely lead to a good kind of yield but yield harvesting of the yield should be based on the good sustainable harvesting practices and those to be designed because ban this kind of collection or ban that kind of collection that cannot be the solution if it is said that there should be alternate resources what kind of alternate resources we have been talking about there are major kind of two resources one mahua flower and second hindu patta those are the major, major resources what kind of alternate we are talking about we have to go for intensification of the agriculture intensification of the agriculture again require availability of the, of the water availability of the water again require um, uh, addressing storages of ground water and surface water and that entire uh, management of the uh, water system we require good forest forest cover the good forest cover connects to get good good kind of harvest harvest of water and good kind of harvesting of the water will definitely increase the storage ground water storage and surface water that will lead to definitely providing good kind of water water resource for more irrig irrigation in my area It's a paddy area. Only we are we are getting getting to work for 125 days. What about rest of the period, rabi area? What about the summer period? That is to be only possible. That will be only possible if there will be adequate resource of water availability of the of the water will be there. And second thing, sustainable conservation oriented management of the ecosystem. People definitely would honor this kind of conservation practices once they feel that if those forest produce they are giving us good kind of economic uh, support and good kind of livelihood in my area where earlier people used to get around 5 to 10000 of rupees per family in a season now they are getting 25 to 50000 60000 rupees uh, rupees in season one family getting mowa mowa flowers and they are selling for uh, 25 to 50000 um, in in the, the tendu season they are they are getting the same kind of profit so uh, approximately 75000 to 1.25 125000 like This is the average income per family in the area where people have only meager uh, possession of land, not more than one acre. So this we need to understand. Understand what resources people have there in their possession, what their personal resources, what kind of common resources are there 
in their possession and how we can connect personal uh, kind of resources for the livelihood together with forest resources and other common common resources then only we can address the entire uh, this uh, impact of and the adverse impacts of forest fire definitely forest fire has to be brought into control but that will be possible only to people's participation and to make management at the ground level and together forest department and people should work together thank you thank you thank you dilip ji dilip ji i just have a small question from you uh, there is lot of case study that is now being documented on other ntfp bamboo for example in your area is becoming a big uh, source of income but also in orissa for example there is now a huge processing of custard apple kiranji chiranji and 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 there are other ntfp which has which never had a good market linkage so uh, apart from mahua tendu uh, in central india you know uh, isn't other ntfp is also something that we should really explore and and provide value addition yes there are a number of uh, forest produce having high value and being used in medicines and other for the other commercial purposes the thing is that there is a what is the marketing chain Market. marketing chain now in mohwa case there is a minimum support price of rupees 30 32 per kg but in marketing traders are there to purchase for 40 rupees if the if the mohwa is stored in the in the godown properly that 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 price will go up to 70 rupees per kg but we need to have storages godowns everything and what about lag there are custard apple then uh, wood apple then jamun uh, hara beda but many people they are coming to come to say that we are there to buy the products even about this uh, uh, crude botanicals use as a medicine when i was working in bastar for making biodiversity plan in 2002 to 2003 we recorded um, uh, collection and sale of the ntp was to the tune of 500 crore per annum uh, unrecorded sale was to, 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 to the tune of 1500 crore what about this all bicholi they are having their 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 purchase out uh, center in every village every village the moment you, you poor people go there they would get get immediate immediate cash payment where is where is the system of government can people stay wait for you because harra they had a minimum support price that is for 18 rupees and then uh, they want money immediately for some uh, uh, some urgency and the that poor tribal go to the grocery shop and 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 and, get, and sell for distress sale for 10 rupees a kg and their grocery shop give image image, image uh, proceed of the amount, yes. sale amount this there is no system so we have we need to establish a system we need to make certain agency work for for those things and then alternative livelihood will definitely depend on sustainable and conservation oriented management practices of the forest and uh, okay. water, water system okay. thank you okay thank you thank you very much so uh, you know this is the right time to bring piyush piyush had done had actually you know led a very important study that world bank uh, uh, did on forest fire so piyush for your opening remarks and then i will go to sanjay for his overall uh, you know uh, impression on this issue as well as the legal remedies and cases uh, that has that deals with this issue so piyush please thanks chandra i think thank you very much to mandvi and uh, uh, praveen uh, I, i i particularly uh, was very much interested in the last but one slide and the last slide and the last but one slide talks about climate change and and the emissions and the last slide gives you you know clear idea that where you are going from the, from this you know and i uh, we have done this study uh, uh, in the world bank on forest fire management systems in india and how these can be strengthened but i don't want to uh, concentrate on that study because it's particularly now we are talking about ntfp and and their impacts on the forest fire and uh, i i think the study has rightly captured you know the the study has come out very clearly that you know tendu patta is one of that or the ntfp which lead links to these activities is one of the cause and this is this has been established in our study and this is coming out very clearly in your study now based on the uh, satellite presentations which praveen has clearly uh, presented i think uh, uh, the two uh, two important reasons when in when we were doing our study was that you know one was negligence very clearly and second was you know a collection of non timber forest produce and where not only mahua and tendu but there were other related uh, 
and TFPs like uh, fodder, honey, mushroom seeds, and medicinal plants, charcoal, and other things. These were also included as part of you know which can cause fire and can can bring in fire. So there was no question that you know these are not uh, these are directly linked to the forest fire. No question comes you know uh, you know definitely these needs to be contained you know and I agree with the the uh, Deepji and uh, Roy Sab you know India has very good fire detection system you know as far as detection system is concerned they started with MODIS and at least the cycle of the forest fire which goes from prevention detection suppression and post fire management at least in the detection side we were uh, slightly better and as Chandra pointed out next step is how to strengthen that system and that is a lot of work is now going on Alino may not be have that kind of impact but there are other factors which are now being considered in this new model of detection in detection system the only issue is that the feedback mechanism uh, it, the signal goes but the signal when it comes back that, that kind of feedback mechanism is not there. The users are very less, currently only around 44,000 and it's reaching around one lakh shortly. So, so issue in that system is that very clearly with, uh, with what Roy, uh, Roy Sab and, and, and um, Dilip Ji has brought in, community has not been brought into consideration. So probably if that system would have been given, you know, clearly that hands in the, in the, in the form of community, their training, you know, that the, if this, signal comes in your village whether it comes back with the detection of fire and or, or not so that is one part the second part i think uh, which i won't go into details what can be done but i will definitely focus more on the study part uh, is important area which we discussed here and i'm glad that that point was also mentioned by manvi that you know let's look at the health aspect of this WHO has very clearly said that 600 million trees are chopped down annually to make cigarettes and 84 million tons of CO2 emissions are released into atmosphere and 22 billion liters of water is used to make cigarettes. So that's, that's one important uh, linkage which we have to establish whether we have to go ahead with the Tendupata collection or we have to go for sustainable uh, uh, forestry, which was indicated here in this discussion, that regeneration and other related aspects has to be taken. Where again, communities' participation is equally important. States have started with benefit sharing, but it is more inclined towards contractors. We, uh, I think, in Madhya Pradesh, they have started a good way of benefit sharing, where money is now larger part of the money which is collected through NTFP collection is going to community, but in other states, it's more contractor focused. You know they are getting more money, uh, and, and there are deterrents, but deterrents uh, don't. I mean, in case of forest and management or in environment, deterrents are uh, we haven't seen it. It's 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 all awareness and your ownership which brings more changes rather than deterrent uh, aspects. I think the important in this case is you know that, for example, tobacco. There is a study and it has come out very clearly that ninety percent of Indian adults know now that 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 tobacco is bad for health. Now, if tobacco is bad for health, should we encourage Tendu uh, uh, collection or the BD preparation or the cigarette? So that's alternative or livelihood when we are talking, I think we should talk about these things and the market interventions. Uh, we spoke about carbon uh, uh, carbon uh, market and I think that's, that's one area where we should link it up because the decision of bringing this uh, you know, despite this tobacco farming, and this is another important fact, which I just wanted for the benefit of our uh, colleagues and get their, uh, you know, that is farming of tobacco. So it contributes 1% of the GDP as per the study. And the direct health ex expenditure on treating tobacco related disease only accounts for 5.3% of total health spending in India. So they see the comparison. It's, I mean, if we bring health, probably we should totally discourage, but decision in democratic form in India is slightly tough. So we should explore possibility of bringing market intervention, which is very important. And I think carbon market is growing. Uh, I, have, I have seen now uh, the companies like Nestle and others are moving towards sustainable uh, products. So even on the cigarette side, sustainable cigarettes, which how and so those kind of aspects are coming in. So why not we talk about sustainable forestry and sustainable uh, forest management uh, from, from the perspective of Tendu. 
on forest fire i think um, we all know where is there are intricacies on reporting and the economic loss of fire uh, disincentive within the departments are there so and there's no focus on prevention uh, part there's no focus on on post fire management so those are issues which i think this needs a separate uh, discussion as well but these are issues and i think uh, going forward we need to have a, a social and health angle very important in this as chandra pointed out these are that that triangle is needed to be discussed market mechanism arts to be brought in so that at least if we discuss this tendu and communities have to give some alternative where they should head for i'll stop here chandra for the time Thank you, Piyush. Before you know, I, again, one question from you. See, uh, I, I I had the chance of going through that report. I remember talking to you also when I was writing my column on on Australian forest fire. Uh, you know, there are some very concrete recommendation that World Bank gave to to government of India on forest fire. If you'd like to mention one or two of them for the benefit of of the audience. i think that's very important and another point which i just wanted and your study is timely for that uh, chandra and that is that government of india is now uh, taking those steps forward and one step was you know uh, that forest department alone can't do forest fire management and they should have some kind of collaboration with other departments and that is uh, disaster management authorities and disaster management departments so one step which uh, recently uh, prime minister has announced that we should do all those 23 to 26 districts which are fire prone districts there should be a bigger project which is which is under preparation consultation and stakeholder engagements have started i participated in one of their panel discussion uh, on in the first week of may so i think we should also engage uh, and i will definitely bring this study also to their reference uh, which they are preparing now extensively for india and where this aspect of you know benefit sharing and uh, mechanisms cap uh, incentive mechanism needs to be brought in because the focus out there is not this focus out there is again its management and that's more on the uh... i think we have uh, we have momentarily lost uh, piyush uh, in this conversation i'll get back to him later but uh, uh, last but not the least uh, mr upadhyay sanjay uh, your, your comments looking forward please thank you chandra uh, first of all congratulations to you and your team manvi and praveen for that study i guess it's a fact which is well known and it's got sort of endorsed by your study uh the question that comes really is is the state ignorant about it uh, uh do don't they know this already and if they know it uh, is there a design to it uh, does the legal frame addresses it does the policy frame addresses it or not i think that's the real query and uh, when one looks at the law itself i mean right from 1865 to 1878 to 1927 rk law that we follow fire has been an important part there even so if you look at the forest act for example of 1927 it really talks about not only the punishments but also talks about seasonality and that seasonality and the exception to that the forest officer has been given the discretion to notify such se such seasons and act uh, with his prudence about that particular area now the trouble is while we have the provision and the space whether the forest officer is actually notifying those seasons or actually acting upon that provision is the real question even provisions like you know your exercise of forest rights will be suspended of pasture of forest produce will be suspended in case you set fire to a reserve forest i don't these are more in theory than actually in practice because again these are very very strong uh, uh, punitive measures but i think as pyush said that uh, you know deterrence is not really working in this country uh, but we do have that provision and it gets sort of uh, uh, more diffused when you start framing right based laws uh, like the forest rights act uh, or the pesa which is the provision of panchayat uh, to extension to scheduled areas act because here you are talking about granting ownership to communities to gram sabhas to forest dwelling scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers so when it comes to 
a, a framework which is very right based versus a very command and control punitive measure there is an apparent conflict and i think that's where the system does not seem to work uh, a lot the other very interesting thing that we found out uh, while uh, preparing for this is that the onus of proving a forest offence actually as far as fire is concerned is actually not with the accused it is with the state and therefore you actually have to follow the evidence act to actually prove who lit the forest and i think that is a very important question because you're talking about areas where there is very little access of the state and more of the community so to prove an offence is a big issue and i think these are important things because if you look at the forest act uh, the the provision or the onus is on the state but if you look at the wildlife act the onus is actually on the accused so when you're talking about different sets of areas like a protected area the entire game changes you know i think these are very very important uh, uh, details that we normally miss when we are looking at our legal framework of course there are standard provisions which says you know causing fire is prohibited etc you know all the protected areas or all kinds of forest but there are incentive mechanisms also which we have not used we have always gone on the command and control regime but there are incentive framework within the law which talks about rewards which talks about uh, uh, you know uh, court based rewards which talks about state based rewards of actually preventive uh, creating a pre preventive framework but we have not used that very often and i think these are things that we need to really work uh because the problem is well known it is manifested uh, quite well but do we have a framework that can address is it where we need to really put our mind to uh when it comes to uh, the the apparent conflict which i mentioned between the indian forest act and the wildlife act and the forest rights act and the pesa uh, i think that uh, the tension about rights versus conservation needs to really be, uh, be teased out because it all boils down to how are we managing our forests and when we talk about managing our forests the working plan which is the legal document now the management plan which is also a semi legal document now the conservation and management plan that you create on the forest rights act the joint forest management micro plans that we create which is not a legal document when all these planning tools merge with each other in the same space how are we addressing the issue of forest fire becomes very important and you know i'm not even getting into the indian penal code etc and the national disaster management act which i think we should also alluded to if you look at the ndma act itself you will find there are institutional mechanism to address this but again how many people really know that you know when it comes to forest fires you'll be surprised we have a number of forest policies we have the national forest policy talking about forest fires you have the national policy on disaster management act you have a very very detailed document called forest fires and disaster management from the nidm which is the national institute of disaster management you have a very very important document called the forest fire management global best practices by ndma but all these are in silos unfortunately i don't know how many foresters have read this uh, or or the other way around you know i think these are the real issues i don't know how many of you are aware that the national green tribunal took this whole issue of forest fires in uttarakhand for quite some time almost a year and a half and then finally it resulted in something called the national action plan on forest fire in 2018 which was prepared by the ministry of environment and forest and typically ngt with no disrespect uh, they they form a committee and that committee is very multi uh, sort of foral in that sense because moef is there cpcb is there the wildlife institute of india is there the ndma is there the icfr is there the forest survey of india is there the national remote sensing is there all the pccfs of all the states are there the trouble is do these committees deliver and i think that's where the problem is uh, because we always have this very fancy uh, institutional uh, optics if i may use the word but uh, i want to therefore end with a very small quote by nidm itself which says fire is a very good servant but a very bad master uh, so thank you uh, uh, chandra for this opportunity i hope i'll be able to answer some questions yeah, as well yeah, yeah. thank in you in fact there are number of questions from audience that is there and i i would take that first frankly uh, and one of them is one question is on campa you know we are talking about large amount of money under campa now okay and therefore sarav has asked a question to you specifically uh, sanjay 
in terms of how are we using can we use a uh, campa money so that's one and and then there is a specific question to you about ipc 292 to 302 okay and uh, can they be used for forest fire so both questions to you okay so campa ideally as you know is largely for rdf which is rehabilitation of degraded forest to anr which is assisted natural uh, natural uh, regeneration uh, so directly maybe no but if you look at the overall forest management campa can always be tweaked and interpreted in a manner where you can use such money for forest management because uh, forest conservation act itself which i forgot to mention as gives an exception in it, in its non forestry definition to create fire lines and fire management systems so the answer is yes you can use it uh, as far as ipc is concerned uh, a more appropriate section would be section 268 Uh, and 285, which actually pertains to negligent conduct on fire and combustible matter, uh, and also 435, which which punishes people for willfully uh, causing fire. So more of legal lessons later, but these are more direct questions, uh, okay. rather provisions which which in the IPC which can be used. But you know, nevertheless, what I was saying earlier was that you have the entire conservation laws which specifically talks about provisions on controlling forest fires. So you don't need a generic law. You have the specific law already. I think Pius wants to say something. Pius, uh, is it okay now? Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, it is okay. Oh, sorry, I, it was, I was unmuted. Uh, muted. Uh, so I think I just wanted to confirm what Sanjay said. You know, Kempa uh, uh, are being used now. Uh, Odisha is one state which I have personally visited and seen that you know for the fire line clearances and for bu buying equipments they have already. Uh, uh used campa money and and has i mean uh, they have prepared a a shadow uh working plan to work in particular particular few villages uh, where the forest uh, fire is uh, is really and uh, those villages which are vulnerable to forest fire so that is one second on on i on on reporting i think sanjay made a very good point and that's that's what you know it's it's always under reporting because accuse is on the other side of the table so 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 what he has to prove so he doesn't have to prove he will simply he or she will simply say you know the the area of fire covered was less and this was not done at the behest of someone so it was so so those kind of things are really typical to forest department which needs to be taken care when we are moving further on the management of forest okay. Sure. Uh, I think Dilip ji is leaving uh, uh, in five minutes, so I wanted his last comments before he leaves. Dilip ji. Yeah. आपके आपका ah, last comment. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. बोलिए. So, एक दो सवाल है आपसे लोगों ने पूछा. There are few questions that people have asked you. One is that uh, you know, uh, one Sagar is asking that you know, can agroforestry, uh, you know. Uh, On private agricultural land, uh, be a solution to tendu-induced forest fire. No, in, in particularly because tendu are being collected in uh, from two areas: one that for uh, under forest, and second from the agricultural land. That is called in Bari in my area. From the from the agricultural bunch, they are uh, these plants are there. But um, my 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 again question: whatever ori origin may be the may be of the forest fire. as the question is about the management of the forest fire okay management to be done only at the level of the from where it it it, it initiates and that that requires because again we are talk, talking about where are the fund provision and budgetary provisions for this control of the forest fire so okay campa have enough money campa 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 funds are collected from the diversion of the of the forest uh, for that cause because there is a specific cause for building uh, campa fund And then why not this entire entire amount in Kampa to be spent only on the conservation management? And again and again, I am I just raise the same question because we are experienced because of good practices of this banning of the bush cutting and community control over the forest that our entire area has come up very luxuriantly, even adding to the uh, yield of the uh, yield of the Tindu and not only Tindu but also also other other species of diverse variety in my area. and many areas because one of my cluster that is in the in the, in the tiger tiger uh, reserve area uh, this is a corridor of between nabai nabai gaon and nagjira so we have seen a good activity of 
uh, wildlife and people say that we don't have any harm from the from the wildlife simply we just support us to use some barbed wire support us to do some uh, protective fencing to the to, to their agriculture these those are the those are some examples i would like to share and people where they are staying let them stay there but make them trustful confident that they are the real partner in the in, in the entire conservation management of the forest people should not be treated as a mere daily wage earner in the name of the name of the partner in the in the participatory management that is the requirement if people say that we are going to they are going, going to control fire in second thing whosoever they are there particularly those are the trader those are the those are the major role, role players again i am asking this question because sanjay is here how many convictions are there for the violation of our, uh, rule why we are we are we are making that condition a tender condition in the in in, in the tender we are talking about uh, conservation oriented management in 2022 started in uh, 1988 and again we are putting the same condition allow 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 pruning allow pruning pruning uh, we, we don't feel, uh, understand what is the impact of the of the continued pruning simple pruning of the material for a department has to has to make alter all the practices and put a ban on such practices okay. which are causing causing harm to the forest management thank you i am just leaving May yeah I yeah yeah thank you thank you very much thank namaskar you. thank you now i have question which i think both anish and piyush can answer and uh, basically the the question is that you know one is one one is forest department but what are your ideas of involving community i mean to say people say let's involve community but what does it mean in actual practice how do you involve community do you pay them as a forest fire uh, fighter or is it that you are expecting them to do things on their own so can you put a little bit more effort to explain to us what does it mean uh, to involve community in 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 forest fire management anish and then piyush okay um so um see punishment doesn't work often it's the incentives that work and that we have seen in several economic models where if government decides to provide certain incentives through certain programs we call them schemes but in a positive light if we provide those schemes where in say in maharashtra in in at, at least in the corridors that connect the tiger reserves there is a shama dr shama prasad janvan yojana now that through that uh, villages which are part of the corridor are given a some amount of money it is 2.5 million rupees given to the villager uh, to the village because it is inside the corridor that connects to tiger reserves and if and while that money is given there is a kid pro quo which means that they sign an mou with the villager that they will be charai bandi which means they will restrict the kind of grazing areas they will not allow fires to come in and that they will participate in natural regeneration program so so these kind of uh, you know relationships between the government and the communities are important uh, convergence so especially in these kind of villages which are really doubly marginalized uh several other departments of the of the government have to come in it's not just the problem of uh, the forest department or the disaster management department everything the economy of the nation is dependent on uh, natural resources and so therefore automatically the transport ministry the energy ministry and all those things come and if you can talk about convergence which means that the the through the micro plans of uh, uh, of the villages if money can be channelized in a transparent manner into the bank accounts of of the villagers then things will change i think another thing which is actually doesn't come as an in, it's 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 not so straight forward but i think decentralization of energy is an extremely important uh, uh, factor here when i say energy i'm talking about power uh, and when we say there are a lot of minor forest produce and uh, dilip mentioned that you know where are the alternatives are there any alternatives for uh, 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 to move away from tendupatta actually the alternatives are not making sense at this point in time because the value add is not possible so if you are selling a product that you get from uh, nature just as that product then it doesn't make economic sense because the energy to gain is not balancing out so what we have to do is if we are able to decentralize power 
we will suddenly see that lot of alternatives currently could be bamboo could be so many different things and and i listed down just while somebody was talking some 30 names of plants which are being used in different parts of the country and so uh, you know uh, we need to look at power as a very important conduit to moving away from this uh, injurious uh, profession that people are dragged into even if it is for a month and a half it does have a huge cascading effect on the health of the nation so that's one and and finally i think payment for ecosystem services is also something that we have to understand say many of these marginalized communities that are dependent on natural resources especially low um, value products so a tendu patta actually is a low value product when it comes to the person who is actually picking it right the money is made at a different level altogether so to move away from these low value products we have to think of payment for ecosystem services to break the chain now what does that mean so if i am a villager and if i am restricted in the kind of industries that i can indulge in because i am in a forest area my opportunity cost needs to be compensated by the cities who are benefiting either from fresh air which is difficult to measure but water definitely is easy to measure so if we can measure the value of the forest through the water that is consumed by individuals and also that are running the industry that money can be a huge and i'm talking about small amounts per person it can be a huge incentive for uh, marginalized communities because those are the opportunity costs that we can compensate for so i think uh, it's not a straight forward answer as to how to involve but at at an immediate level there have to be joint forest management committees which are more effective and that can happen through money only it cannot just happen because you know because let us let us understand that whether we are living in an urban setup or inside a a, a forest there is this uh, you know always going to be the tragedy of commons that is going to play out whether we are talking about big industrialists or marginalized community so we have to somehow make sure that there is enough for everybody only then can you have this perverse incentives of indulging into these kind of activities uh, going down Okay. Thank you, uh, Piyush. I think your inputs on on you know will you know payment for ecosystem or say for example carbon work uh, work out in case of Tendu fire. So I think um, uh, clearly Anish has brought in passion that is very important. Payment on ecological services in Costa Rica and other places have worked very well in such uh, where the where the most of the uh, forest areas are with the private. communities and some of them have very low land holding uh, so what they have done is you know water as a prime you know if if water is being supplied to the uh, urban areas then uh, they should be paid for the protection of forest or the other ecological services which they are maintaining so pes is is a good alternative but pes needs to be evolved in india it has it hasn't gone very well so far uh and and i i think uh, in recent uh, policies now pes is being encouraged and i think we should definitely work in this case of tendu patta also to explore that possibility second is i think uh, carbon market for sure i think carbon market will definitely uh, come in this because there is for surface uh, so it it links with deforestation for example tendu patta they are they are, they are removing so it is bringing deforestation so if we talk and bring them in the area of afforestation and bringing more Uh, regeneration of those areas and give incentive and incentive exactly in the form of some money it's not incentive for, for so so that that kind of uh, models we have to definitely explore uh, uh, chandra what what we have in our study uh, explored that what are current methods of community engagement forest department is doing and what we can incentivize further so there were few listings which we done during those uh, discussions uh, or the study was one was public awareness second was you know bringing them in meetings public gatherings school programs one panchayat discussions wages for clearing fires and some monetary payments during whenever there is a fire so prevention uh, activities so i think they have been given but they have given very marginally for watch towers and watch watchers they give them incentive but that's also during particular period of season uh during forest fire so what discussion took place and consultation at that time were that there should be more provisions of incentive and that should be financial incentives 
uh, there should be more extension services. By extension services, what they were saying that you know we talk about NTFP value chains, but it should be high end value chain. Why do we? Why we say only NTFP forest produce value chain? We should say high end forest produce value chains. Agriculture has made quite a good effort in this. Forest should also have extension services and value chain uh, linkages in their forest produce and. These NTFPs needs to be identified very clearly, and 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 we just had in this discussion also, you know, number of those things are possible. So I think that's very important. Uh, and secondly, uh, if if we are really bringing them for forest fire, I think the training on forest fire, giving them equipment to 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 prevent uh, forest fire. Generally, uh, when when there is fire, we we go for we bring communities and ask them to do it with a broom, which is uh, general. Uh, um, equipment which they use so which is really disheartening in one sense so so it's important to strengthen them with the uh, with the with the training with the uh, with the equipments and important point which i left when uh, you were asking you know some kind of recommendation and that was you know intersectoral coordination there are very good work which individual states are doing but there is no sharing platform or monitoring mechanism whether these things are really bringing value uh, that is very important. And second is wherever community institutions, whether community institutions have been strongly brought in in this discussion and and be are contributing one kind of study with, whether JFM has really benefited. So those kind of studies uh, we recommended, and these these were also there as part of the community interaction uh, recommendations. Okay, thank you, thank you, Piyush. Now before I go to Pranay, and uh, there are many questions which are related to tobacco, and I think Pranay is the right person to answer them. Uh, I would request Sanjay and P.S. Roy for their last comments. So, Sanjay, if I'll start with you, then I'll go to Dr. Roy. Well, uh, I don't have too many comments, uh, uh, last comments. I think uh, one point that is coming out very clearly one is uh, how are we managing our forests? And when it comes to management, I think the planning tools become very important. And uh, the, the array of planning tools that we have, which I mentioned in my talk, whether it's a micro plan, whether it's the conservation management under the FRA, whether it's the PESA plans, whether it is the working plan, whether it's the management plan under the Wildlife Act. I think we all need to really uh, uh, see the role of these kind of destructive practices and how it needs to be addressed head on. And whether we have the, the human resource and the material resource to deal with it. And I think that's where the real uh, crux of the matter is. And if we can get that right, everything else will follow, whether it's alternatives to uh, Tendu Patta or whether it's reducing cigarette smoking people in the world, uh, you know, which is a huge task. Uh, but I think if we address the core issues and, and the other thing is whether the legal frame needs to shift towards an incentivized frame, whether it's PES or whether it's other incentive based models that we can uh, join at the ground level. I think those are the things that works, and and we need to ex we need to also uh, make sure that people on the ground understand these things. Uh, they are not to be taught, but they are to be co-opted and and made sure that the the work that they will do will actually bring in uh, better livelihoods and better conservation outcomes. So I think these are the messages I would uh, end my conversation with. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you very much, Dr. Roy. Uh, well, I think uh, uh, it was a very lively discussion and I really got educated with many of the facts. Uh, I, uh, I would say that forest fire, as mentioned by Anish, that have been there, it is part of uh, a forest ecosystem at about three decades back. Also, it was a part of forest management practices. But you know, the climate change has brought this entire forest fire uh, management as a, a major challenge for the uh, forests and uh, bioresources, biodiversity. Anish has made uh, these points very clearly. I really appreciate his, uh, he has gone into minute level, micro level, how this uh, forest fire is changing the forest, flora, soil, forest, flora, and uh, fauna and also microbial flora in the soil. Um, the second point which I would like to mention in the legal aspects and uh, I also like the comment which he made uh, that there are many legal frameworks 
and under which uh, this control sanjay made it very clearly that this can be uh, done uh, and actually the implementation at the ground level is uh, actually uh, has to be addressed uh, more seriously mainly because of the climate change scenario because now we are reaching a tipping point climate change has brought us on a tipping point where the resource, bio resources species human being will survive and it's very a fact of threat to the planet thank you thank you very so, much for giving me the opportunity no 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 so thank th so uh, we are really thankful to you for for joining this meeting and supporting the study now i will request pranay for i'll give the floor to pranay and before i give the floor may i request all of us to open our camera we would like to take one picture uh, for for all the panelists unfortunately dilip ji is not here but nevertheless so please open uh, your camera and mandvi or anyone can take a picture so all of all of us are there done okay thank you pranay the floor is yours thank you so much chandra i think in interest of time i'm just going to be very quick uh, with my comments uh, i think it is very clear from all the panelists that we are talking about planetary health we are talking about human health we are talking about species we are talking about landscapes collapsing we are talking about tipping points in climate we are also talking i mean i want to talk about two aspects i think i'll divide this into two clear parts first of course is the massive public health uh, effect that uh, we see uh, from uh, tobacco use uh, we know that 7.7 uh, lakh uh, adult males die prematurely every year by smoking bds now bds are the single most largest produced product in the country at one time there were 1.2 trillion bds made we made more bds than uh, staples or pins or you know <laughs> anything of that kind you know think about it 1.2 trillion is a huge number uh but what is what has it resulted in is it's about of course as manvi mentioned and of course uh, thank you anish for also uh, championing the cause that it is a massive public health uh, effect that we face uh, but this perverse economics is something that is needs to be disentangled the product is made by the poorest of the poor and it is meant for the poorest of the poor and it kills the poorest of the poor right um we know that from the ea sarma uh, first committee report on the 100 poorest districts uh, of india 77 of them were either tendu plucking or bd rolling or both right and clearly in the last 70 80 years uh, none of these districts have come out of the poverty trap what we know is that these poverty trap uh, trapped villages or communities are the ones that fill the coffers of some of the richest families in india and you know of course they are also Uh, very influential in political spheres but i want to correct uh, uh, anish a little here that you know uh, tendu plucking for using to make beads is not a traditional practice in fact it is it arrived at the same time when cigarettes were being made it was actually uh, uh, the first uh, bead uh, rolling uh, workshop was set up around the same time when the first cigarette factory was being set up so certainly because tobacco is not native to india as you know it arrived uh, you know in the in the 15th uh, late 15th early 16th century it took a very long time for it to indigenize and become into what it is it's taken a very long time and this curve of it getting become becoming part of our culture is something of a myth which everybody likes to perpetuate so i just want to make it quite clear that you know it's neither traditional nor uh, nor cultural for us and certainly not indigenous as as a as a practice to roll anything in a tendu patta to roll uh, i mean tobacco since it was not native so i think that's the point that i want to make on the public health perspective i just want to i mean i'm not an ecologist or i mean or certainly not as uh, as gifted as uh, uh, you know anish and uh, and uh, others but i'll just uh, make a couple of points that you know uh, the intensive collection of tendu patta happened only when the sal forests were you know depleted and you know this is a second story species it, it in fact comes below malotus and bixa oleana it's i mean tendu is not a light demander but once it's once it is offered that it is it's actually a wolf tree it gains its crown and becomes into a bit of a shrubby tree 
and that's what makes it even better for them to pluck uh, for tendu pluckers to pluck uh, tendu now the point i'm making here is that the burning regimes have come only post independence in 40s and 50s and 60s and you know got the legitimacy and the and the backing of the forest departments and everybody and was made to look traditional because there were a handful of like i said influential uh, merchant uh, barons who who actually control that whole narrative um, i think therefore there are upstream and downstream effects uh, which have been created like uh, uh, just as Anish and uh, Professor Roy and uh, Piyush spoke about. I think uh, I, I'm not going to talk about those because I think uh, it's been uh, very well elaborated by them. But like Professor Roy mentioned, I think uh, emissions have uh, uh, have a widespread effect. I think we are seeing the, you know, there's a small contribution of Tendu burning or forest floor burning uh, from uh, to the Asian brown haze. And therefore the black carbon that goes and deposits in the uh, the snow covers, which also is a is an indirect way of uh, creating a climate change af uh, effect. Now that might be marginal. Of course, it's very very tiny. It could well be under one percent. I don't know what the contribution is, but still is. And think about it; it's been happening for seventy years. Um, and finally, I think uh, the the inspirational work of Dilip Bhai is, I think, commendable. And I think. Uh, uh, what I really appreciate is what Dilip Bhai has been able to showcase is that, you know, his his kind of work suggests that, you know, forests now no longer need to be a source of carbon, but a sink of carbon, because that is the primary purpose of landscapes, of intact ecosystems. Forests, ponds, lakes, they are there to absorb carbon that comes from, from anthropogenic sources and, of course, from natural sources, including fires. But these are deliberate fires. What I think the conversation digressed into was that we were trying to look at uh, ways in saying, uh, if fires were to happen, uh, we need to do this. Of course, that's a legitimate part. But the fact that we should be looking at an end game of forest fires that have been induced to produce Tendu Patta, I think is a perverse source of economics. And I think all of us agree on that. And finally, I just want to uh, say this, that uh, you know we need to be looking at an end game not only for Tindu Patta, but also uh, looking at how we want to reach that end game by having a participatory measure at looking at rewilding India's forests, at looking at finding uh, alternative livelihoods for communities who have been so far being been, been taken away from that uh, their original rights of extracting uh, products that were useful for their survival and for their daily lives. Uh, I, I believe the Hindu Patta extraction has been a huge distraction because it's been guided by political forces initially, uh, you know, Swadeshi movement to make beeries, and then it became a legitimate part to make it a poor man's smoke. Uh, I think that that narrative has to change if India really wants to meet its health goals, planetary health goals, and largely its climate change goals. And of course, water and soil security uh, in tow, which I think uh, comes together with both uh, uh, public health and planetary health. So thank you so much, Chandrabhushan. I think this was a revitalizing uh, discussion. And uh, I really look forward to how this report is, is presented and accepted in the larger academic uh, and policy spheres. And uh, you know, we always look uh, forward to guidance from people like you and Piyush and uh, uh, Anish. And of course, Sanjay is, is a luminary in, in environmental law. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Pranay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, ultimately, this discussion has to, to be much more louder. Uh, I think uh, this is the first step, the first paper that, that, that we, are, we are going to publish. Yeah, you are right. Uh, we will publish it uh, in a peer review journal, but we will also bring out fact sheets, state fact sheets, and do some discussion uh, at the state level. But going ahead, we will also work on alternatives. Because I think, you know, uh, I remember this word, actually Piyush told me if I'm not wrong, that do not call them as minor forest produce. They are not minor forest produce. We generally call NTFP minor forest produce. They're actually, if value addition is done, they, they are the major forest produce because timber is not something that Indian forests are going to give it to us. And NTFP, if value addition, processing, community engagement is done well, they will be the major source of wealth for the forest uh, dwelling communities. So we will work on the alternatives as well, because that's uh, a big area of work uh, where uh, effort needs to be put. Already a lot of work is happening. 
maybe uh, we will be providing more knowledge, support, uh, uh, research uh, in this area. But, uh, you know, it has been a fascinating discussion. Uh, I, I want to thank my colleagues for working on this, Manvi, Prerna, uh, Praveen, uh, for doing this uh, uh, report. A lot of work to be done uh, on this uh, further. But uh, to all the panelists, it has been a fascinating discussion, learned a lot, and I hope that audiences, you know, the attendees also uh, got a lot out of it. So uh, thank you very much. And with this, uh, uh, I will close uh, the meeting today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, Anish. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.